So the question I've just been asked is, can BPC-157 help with muscle and joint pain or chronic pain? First of all, let's talk real quick because the answer is yes, but that doesn't make a very interesting video. Can BPC-157 help with pain? Yep. Let's go to the next question. I think you're probably going to want a little bit more than that. Number one, BPC-157 has been banned by the FDA last February. There's no reason for that as far as the guidance letter from the FDA. It wasn't about safety or efficacy of the peptide itself because, again, it's a 15 amino, amino acid chain peptide, right? That's what BPC-157 is. And when the FDA bans something, their guidance letter on why they did this, and they grouped a bunch of these peptides together, and these are naturally occurring peptides. BPC-157 was first isolated from gastric juice in a human. So your body makes it, okay? Helps protect you from ulcers. Helps your GI system. Helps neuroregulatory systems. When it comes to the pain management part of that, why would BPC-157, first of all, back to FDA later, they banned it because of the potential of contamination from bulk source components. Not because they had found any contamination in bulk source components, but they banned these peptides, even though they're naturally occurring, because it's not a drug and doesn't have drug approval. Okay, let's start there. What does BPC-157 stand for? This is my favorite answer to any question ever when someone says, can BPC-157 help me with joint pain? Because we get asked the other question all the time, can BPC-157 hurt me? The FDA banned it. BPC is, stands for body protection compound. It was named by scientists decades ago who named things based on what they do in the human body. So if they named something body protection compound, I would think that probably has a beneficial effect. And that would be my answer is yes, BPC-157 has significant, it, what it does for a cell is it helps protect a cell under oxidative stress. Oxidative stress is the cause for cellular dysfunction and pain. It has dramatic increases in nitric oxide. It helps uh, increase VEGF2 formation and transformation in the human body. It helps increase fibroblastic proliferation, which is the cells you need to kind of help heal and initiate healing in tissue. It's been studied in burns, wounds. There's a BPC eye drop because it's been found to be dramatically protective um, in, in the ocular metabolic cycle of retinopathy. So when someone asked, does BP-157 work, is a pretty easy question because that's how your body's trying to protect itself in certain neurodegenerative diseases, cardiac diseases. There's dramatic publications and research showing that it can permanently counteract QT interval with some of the neuroleptic drugs people take that can really put you at risk of heart failure, sudden myocardial death, and a heart attack. And BPC-157 can help reverse that QT interval change on an EKG strip. Most common use in our clinic and most common use in the U.S. is gym rats, right? If you go into any jiu-jitsu studio and say, man, my shoulder hurts, probably half the guys in that gym will pull something out of their gym bag and offer it to you. That compound they're offering you is BPC-157. It's a 15 amino acid chain peptide secreted by the human body that can be incredibly protective from an inflammatory standpoint and help mitigate joint pain, help with wound care, and as a neuroprotective um, peptide as far as overall wellness, I think BPC-157 could be an integral part of your healthcare journey, healthcare journey, if I can get that out right. So I think that the use of BPC-157 certainly I, I can add some benefit to whatever it is you're looking for. So if you're injecting it around the painful joint in a sub-Q space up to twice a day, 200 to 300 micrograms, I, that would maybe be the dose, I would talk to your physician, seek guidance. I don't think it's something I would just get from the gym. 
I think that the storage and use of peptides can be incredibly difficult to be done correctly, but it's not um, harmful to you and it certainly could help mitigate your joint pain. If that's the question, then that's the answer. This is brought to you by the Zero Downside Podcast. I'm Dr. Wade McKenna. Please hit like and subscribe. Thank you for your attention.